me ask you guys a question. Um, <clears throat> how much, is there anyone here that's willing to say that the only portion of the scripture they read was what they read this morning when Sister Janelle was reading the Bible? Sometimes we get busy, right? And sometimes we just don't get a chance to do what we ought to do. Isn't that right? And sometimes we just don't do it. Simple as that, you know. Um, today, what I want to do is to <clears throat> give us a, a solid foundation, if you will. Um, there's a lot of people within the Adventist church that have issues with um, the gift of prophecy. You know, is there anybody here that has issues with the gift of prophecy that honestly would say, raise your hand and say, you know, I kind of, you know, is there anybody? I know there is because <laughs> I've been made known that. But anyway, um, I want to show us, you, you studied last week your Sabbath school lesson, right? And it dealt with Daniel chapter 7, right? Okay, I wasn't here last week. I was in Nogales. Um, Daniel 7 is, is a very important chapter in the Bible, very important chapter. Because Daniel 7 takes us from um, the people of God in Babylon all the way to the second coming of Christ. Amen? What's the first kingdom in Daniel 7? Babylon. What's the second? Middle Persia. Third one? Fourth one. Okay, and then what happens after that? Ah, what happens? The Lord comes. Okay, but we had a little something goes on before that, right? You had Rome. Rome then ruled. And then what came up after Rome ruled? Ten horns. Ten horns, right? Ten horns, right? And then what happened after that? Little horn came up, right? And then you go and the scene switches and it goes from, you know, uh, what's taking place on earth to judgment that's going on in heaven, right? Daniel 9 through 13. Is that correct? Somebody better open the Bibles. I might throw something in on you. Okay? And then you go, in, in, and Daniel uh, is given the explanation by the angel of all these things, this four beasts or four kings that shall arise up in the earth. But anyway, then it tells you his dominion shall be taken away, and the kingdom shall be given to the saints of the Most High God. Is that right? When does that happen? Second coming, right? So does Daniel take us from Daniel? Uh, did it mention, it did mention this week in the lesson that as, as um, Adventists are historists, right? Our, our theology. Are we preterists? Are we futurists? Do you have any idea what we are? Historists. Remember, you've got to be honest. You're in church. We are historists, right? We believe that, that the, prophets, the prophet starts where he is and he moves forward. We have what's called chain prophecies, right? Unbroken chains that continue, right? In other words, we don't take the, the last uh, uh, week of Daniel 7, 7, the 70th week, and we don't separate it from the 69 and throw it way down into the future and let it run idle and say that someone's going to come, uh, some wicked man is going to come and sit and rebuild the temple and all that. We don't believe that, do we? No. We are historicists. It's important. I'm just going to touch on this briefly because it's important, because what God has done for us, what he's done for us, he shows us exactly where the gift of prophecy would arise and when it would arise. You agree with that? You believe that? Huh? Okay. Daniel 7, Revelation 12, and Revelation 13 are parallel. Okay. You have the beast, uh, the, the, the lion, the bear, the leopard, the undescript beast with the iron teeth. Then you have the ten horns, then you have the little horn, right? You have that in all of the chapters, okay? When did the, how long did that little horn rule? What does it say in Daniel 7? What, which, what way does it say it in Daniel 7? Time, times, and the dividing of times are half a time, right? How does it say it over in Revelation 12? It says the same thing, though, but it, does it use a different way? Hmm? In 13, it says 42 months, right? How many, how many uh, days in a biblical month? Okay, 30 times 42 is? Okay, so we're talking 1,260 or times, times, three and a half years, all the same thing, right? 
little horn so we can tell where we are in the flow of history because of our historic understanding of prophecy because the chains go, right, and the scriptures can't be broken. So we know this. So, so when you get to Revelations chapter 12, verse 17, someone have that? I'm going to get a microphone because, see, I like participation. And I'm going to stick a microphone in your face, and I'm only going to go after the people that fall asleep. <laughs> if you fall asleep, you're going to get the mic. <laughs> right? Revelations chapter 12 and verse 17. Uh, and you know the what, dragon what? was wroth with the woman and, the one, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which oh, keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay. The dragon is angry with the woman. Why is the dragon angry with the woman? You just read it. Because they do what? How many of them? And what else do they have? Ah, the testimony of Jesus. Okay, what is this testimony of Jesus? Revelations 19.10. Who has Revelations 19.10? Who wants to read it? Revelations chapter 19, verse 10. What are we looking for? What is the testimony of Jesus? And I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelations chapter 22, verse 9. Revelations chapter 22, verse 9. What we're doing here is we're going to, you know, establish, as uh, Sister Janelle read earlier, we have not followed cunningly devised fables. You know, when I first became a Seventh-day Adventist, and people used to ask me, you know, because that's what they always do, Wayne, you know. They, they, you know, what they're really doing is they want to know what you believe and fill you out a little bit, you know. So they say, uh, um, oh, what church do you go to? And I used to say, uh, <laughs> excuse me? I go to the service, uh, <laughs> service to seven dead minutes. And now, you know what, because, see, I, I love this church and I love the truth that God has given us. I, we, we are on solid ground. You know, we are going to be battered, we're going to be bruised, and you know, that's what the devil's supposed to do. You know, he's got real skin in the game. He knows that he has a short time, you know, so he's going to pull out all the stops, and he's going to try to do the best that he can to cause us to be all confused and, and discombobulated and everything else, right? That's his job, and that's what he does, you know? Just keep in mind, the Bible says the devil is the accuser of the brethren. That job is already filled, so ain't nobody here got to fill it. Do you feel me? <laughs> okay? That job is taken. Okay, Revelation chapter 22, verse 9. Hold on, sister. We got the mic right here. I'll bring you the mic in a minute. I got something for you to read, too. That's all right. Then, then says he to me, see you do it not, for I am your fellow servant and of your brethren the prophets and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Mm -hmm. Worship God. Worship God. I got to stop just for a second here. Because, see, see, some of us, you know, we feel like we are so Bible savvy. And we know what's going to happen. And there's no way, absolutely no way, that I would ever be tricked by a slew foot. Who wrote Revelations? Who wrote Revelations? John. John wrote Revelations. Did you notice that in chapter 19, when the angel came to John, he fell down to worship him? Now, this is the man who wrote Revelations. And the angel had to pick him up and say, oh, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Uh-uh. Worship God. And you would think that would have been enough, right? But then we get to Revelation chapter 22, and he does it again. So what does that tell you? If God, if John fell down twice to worship this angel, knowing what the commandment says, the second commandment, but he fell down twice to worship an angel anyway, where do you think you stand? Where do you think you stand? So don't ever think that, you know what? Ah, not me. I know too much. You know, I wouldn't do that. John the Revelator fell down twice to worship an angel. So what we got coming down the pipe is going to be so dazzling to your eyes that if you are not 
strictly in a relationship with Jesus and in his word, what do you think is going to happen to you? You're going to see things you've never seen before. Saints, this ain't a game, right? It's not a game, okay? So we need to be founded on the word of God. We need to know that we have not followed cunningly devised fables. We need to be established on God's word. John chapter 5, verse 39. John chapter 5, verse 39. You know, why is the scriptures called the testimony of Jesus? You know, now we just had the definition of what the testimony of Jesus is, right? What is the testimony of Jesus? Spirit of prophecy. Spirit of prophecy. Okay? <clears throat> Why is the scriptures called the testimony of Jesus? John chapter 5, verse 39. Let me pass the sister to the mirror. The testimony of Jesus. John 5, 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are which testify of me. Right, the me is Jesus, right? The testimony, the scriptures testify of Jesus. The scriptures testify, the scriptures point to who? Jesus. It's the testimony of Jesus. They point to Jesus. Jesus on the road to Emmaus, you know, with the uh, disciples after they were boohooing, right? We thought it was you. We trusted you. And you got hung up on a cross. Jesus, do you know what Jesus called them? You know what he called him? John chapter, chapter um, excuse me, Luke chapter uh, 24, verse 25. He called them fools. He said, you fools, slow of heart. You know, you got it? Luke chapter thir- uh, 24, verse 25. Right? You got it? Huh? Luke chapter 24, verse 25. Richard, uh-oh. Here we go. Well, you spend some time in that Bible, don't you? You're just flicking through there like you know that book a little bit. Luke 24, 25. Mm-hmm. Then he said to them, O foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Now read verse 27 while you're at it. And beginning at Moses and all of the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. All right. And we've said, he said in in John that the scriptures testify of him, right? And and so we're told in in Timothy, he says what? All scripture is inspired by God, right? It's profitable, you know, for doctrine, for reproof, you know, for for instruction in righteousness. You know, all scripture, how much? The the old and the new, okay? You know what... um, what um, prophets used to be called, you know, before they were called prophets, what were they called? Uh-huh. Where do you find that at? First Samuel? First Samuel, what chapter? It's chapter 9, right? Chapter 9, verse 9. First Samuel. Before they were called prophets, they were called seers, right? They were called seers. You know, if you wanted to inquire of God, you say, oh, I'm going up to the seer's house. I'm going to see about this. Amen? Huh? They were called seers. You know, and it's not by accident, I don't think. You know, Paul says in, in, in 1 Corinthians 12 that, you know, God set the members of the body as it pleased him. You know, where would we be if we all, the whole body was an eye? <laughs> One big old eye <laughs> or an ear. So God set the members in the body as he, so, so and, and it also tells us that the Holy Ghost gave to and gives to individuals the gifts that he determines they should have, Right? It's not something where you can't say, well, you know, I'm really, I'm really keen on this, this healing thing. I, I think I want to do some healing. I'm going to ask the Holy Ghost for healing. I want, you know, place. might be in the wrong place, right? But the Holy Spirit gives you the gift that he determines you should have. And some of them, some he gave, what? Prophets, right? Ephesians chapter 4, when Christ ascended on high, what did he do? He gave gifts unto men, right? He led captivity captive, right? And he gave gifts unto men, some to be apostles, some to be prophets, right? Some to be pastors and teachers. You know, pastors are supposed to be teachers too. There's pastors and teachers. Pastors and teachers, right? You know, but it says when he ascended on high, he gave gifts unto men. And so now we're dealing with this thing called the spirit of prophecy. 
Because some people have a real problem with Ellen White. They do have a real problem with it. You know, say ouch if you can't say amen. Have a real problem with it. You know, and, you know, there's even people that would prefer that, you know, don't, don't, you know, just, just use the Bible from the pulpit. You know that? Don't, don't use any of the spirit of prophecy, Alvin. Just you, you just use the Bible. Right? I could imagine, you know, back in Paul's day, you know, if, 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 you know, uh, Paul's letters or his, his writings were first epistles. They were letters, right? Can you imagine someone saying, you know, today, hey, uh, listen, if you're going to preach from that Bible, just use those first five books of Moses. That's it. Don't go anywhere other than that, you know. Don't just, just, just the first five books of Moses. You know what God says to Moses in, in Numbers chapter 12, or chapter 12, verse 6? If there be a prophet among you, how is he going to speak to them? Numbers chapter 12, verse 6. Okay, let's look it up. Let's look it up. He's going to make this take longer than we need to be. You know, he said, if there be a prophet among you, I will speak to him in what? In dreams and in visions, right? Dreams and in visions. He said, not with Moses, though. Remember that? You remember this, right? Am I making this up? Y'all look at, how you know? Y'all looking at me? Uh, you know what? Listen, I, I hope, I hope that everyone sitting in here has a photographic memory. You know, because, see, honestly, I, I see one sister with a pen, you know, and, you know, it would do you, do you good to bring a pen and a piece of paper to church because, see, you know, an access says, you know what, the Bereans, you know what they did? They searched the scriptures. You know, when Paul was preaching, you know, Wayne, they said, go ahead, Paul, preach, Paul. And Paul would be preaching and he'd say something, hold on, Paul, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me check that out. That's right. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. They searched the scriptures daily. To see if those things were so. See, and I'm gonna be honest with you. A lot of times we come to church. Sometimes we don't even bring our Bibles. We don't even bring our Bibles to church. But they got one in front of the pews. You know what's funny is sometimes when, you know you say, "Well, turn to a so and so book," and somebody grabs the hymnal instead of the Bible. You know, <laughs> and then you tell them, you say, "Hey, look, I want you to turn to uh, the third chapter of Jude," and then you sit there watching them trying to find the third chapter of Jude. Where is this at? I, I, Something wrong with my Bible, preacher. I don't know. <laughs> Ain't no third chapter of Jude in my Bible. That's right. I jest. But God says, if there be a prophet among you, he will speak to him in visions and dreams, right? We got something that God has given us so wonderful. So wonderful. We can prove from Scripture not only about the gift of prophecy, but where it would rise. With the, with the, with, you know, the, the, the woman in Revelation chapter 12 the first woman up at the top, okay? Well, not the one that flees into the wilderness. Two different women. The first woman up at the top of Revelation chapter 12, clothed with the sun. Is that the Old Testament or the New Testament church? Old Testament. Who says New Testament? Who said New Testament? How do you know it's the Old Testament church? She's what? She's pregnant, Right? She's pregnant. She's about to give birth to a, to a child. Who's the child? Jesus. So it has to be the what? Old Testament church. She was pregnant. The child hadn't been born yet. Right? Now, the woman that flees into the wilderness, it says, you know, the Bible says that the earth helped the woman. The dragon spewed out a flood, right? Wanted to try to wipe the woman away. But the earth opened its mouth and helped the woman. Who was the earth? Who's the earth? Let's go back in history. Go ahead. What happened when the church left Europe? Where did they come? To the United States. Okay, let's make it easier. Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. All right. A beast came up out of the earth. The first one came up out of the... So who is the beast that comes up after the first beast that's going down? Okay, it received a deadly wound. And it's, who is that beast, the second beast, Revelation 13, 11, coming up? Who is that? United States. So the earth opened its mouth. The church was being persecuted, right, in Europe. So what did they do? They did what the Clampets did, you know. They didn't move to Beverly Hills, did they? They, 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 they get away from here, right? Y'all remember that, don't you? Jed's a millionaire. <laughs> Ken Folk said, Jed, get, get away from here. He said, California is the place you ought to be. I don't think that's what he said. They got on the, they got on the, on the boat, Mayflower. This is so interesting because you know what? James White had a descendant on the Mayflower. You guys knew that, right? 
God is so good. You know what? And, and where did they land? Where did the Mayflower land? Plymouth Rock? In, in, in New England, right? Plymouth Rock? Where did the spirit of prophecy arise? Huh? Where, where was Ellen White born? Where was she born? Do you think that's coincidence? You know, when the church, when the, when the Mayflower came over here, we had a descendant of James White on board, and they landed in Plymouth Rock, and the spirit of prophecy originated where? In, in New England, isn't that right? But remember something. Did, did, would you say that, um, the, that uh, the Bible says that the dragon was wroth with the woman, and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed because... They keep the commandments, and they have the testimony of Jesus. What is, you want to read something? How about 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20? What does the scripture say? Was there a problem with prophets? Have there always been a problem with prophets? What does Jesus say? A prophet is not without honor except where? In his own country. In his own country. For Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. You know, Chronicles chapter, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. You know, in verse 14 of Chronicles, there were these four prophets. They began to prophesy because Israel was about to deal with an army that was coming out against them. And, uh, you know, so, so these prophets basically said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about this. They prophesied and they told them, look, you know what? You're going to go out against them. And you know how you're going go to go out against them? With ICBMs. Is that right? You're going to go out singing. Singing. And then, you know what, someone said, you know what, hear, hear this. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be what? Did you find that, sister? Did you get it? Okay. What does it say? Yeah, you. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. What does it say? He rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness to Tioka, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood, and he said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Amen. What does it say, Amos chapter 3, verse 7? Amos chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord God would what? He will do nothing unless he does what? Reveal. Now, now, let me ask you this. Did the Old Testament church have prophets? Did the New Testament church have prophets? So would you expect the remnant church to have prophets? Makes sense, doesn't it? Why? Because what does the Bible say? You know, I'm not, just, I'm not going to do anything unless I reveal my secrets unto my servants of prophets. And what does it tell you? God is not a man that he should what? Where does it say that? Ah, numbers what? Numbers 29 what? 18? 29, 13, somewhere in there? 29, 23. 23, 19? Got it. 23, 19. Try that. <laughs> Try that. Well, let's go to he, the New Testament. You know, it's two by two immutable things. It is impossible for God to what? That's in Hebrews 6, right? 6. God, it's impossible for him to lie. He is not a man that he should lie. So if God told you, I'm not going to do anything unless I reveal my secrets unto the servants, the prophets, he's telling the truth, right? So God says, listen, I'm going to, you know, and, and by the way, Robert, does God change? No? Where does it say that at? I am the Lord God, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Where does it say that? Malachi. Malachi what? Malachi 3, 3, 6. Malachi 3, 6. How about, how about uh, Hebrews? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same. Alvin, why doesn't God change? Why doesn't he change? He's perfect, isn't he? He's perfect. He's he does, eternal. Does right. he need to change? No. No. <laughs> he, he, know, right know, he gets it right the first time every time. Every time. And he said, I will not do anything unless I reveal my secrets unto my servants, the prophets, right? And the devil says he's upset because this remnant church, whoever they are, they are identified by two things in 12, right? They keep nine of the commandments. Nine and a half. 
9.9. 10. Say it again. 10. 10. They keep all 10. And they have something called the testimony of Jesus, which is, the Bible said, am I using just Bible? Am I just using Bible? You know, this is the thing. Some folks have a problem with the spirit of prophecy. I'm going to read you something before, we, before this is all closed. Because, listen, in Samuel, Samuel chapter 8, you know, they were asking God, give us a king. Give us a king. We want a king like the other, other folks. We want a king. Give us a king. And what did God tell Samuel? You hearken unto Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter, chapter 8, verse 7. Hearken unto the people. Samuel, because they have not rejected you. They have rejected me. You see, you know what? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20. You got your hand up, won't you read that? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20 is, is, is wonderful admonition. Do not despise. Well, let's go to verse 19 first. Quench not the what? Right? And verse 20 says what? Do not despise what? Prophesying. If you reject prophecy, then who are you rejecting? Because who gave prophecy? What did we read earlier? What, where's Janelle? What did you read earlier? The, 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 there's no private interpretation to prophecy, for prophecy did not come by the will of men, but by holy men of God who spoke as they were moved by who? The Holy Ghost. So if you reject what the prophet says, who are you rejecting? Now, for those that have a problem with Ellen White, you know, she gets battered. She gets battered. You either got to make God a liar or you got to make him change. Because he gave the prophecy to the Old Testament church, he gave prophecy to the New Testament church, and he said that the remnant church would have the spirit of prophecy. And I love the way God does this thing. I love the way he does this. You know, when God gives a, a time prophecy, you know what he does? He raises up a prophet, and he gives a time prophecy, and before that time prophecy meets fulfillment, you know what he does? He raises up a prophet and points his people back to that time prophecy. Did you know that? God has a modus of operandi. Look in the scripture. The devil saw it. You think it's accidental that, that, that all these so-called prophets, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 24 what? In the end, many what prophets would rise? The devil, is, he's not the, you know, I don't have a lot to say about him, you know. But he's not going to waste energy falsifying something that's not true. You know, would you, would you counterfeit, you know, I love this lady already. <laughs> I'm adopting you as, as one of my church moms now. But let me ask you a question. If you were counterfeiting money, if you were a counterfeiter, would you, would you make a $3 bill? No. Why not? Why wouldn't you make a $3 bill? Because I'm not Oh, that's probably right. But do we have $3 bills in our U.S. No, no. currency? So for you to make a $3 bill and walk into a Walmart and try to spend it, you might as well just call the Secret Service and say, come right. get me, right? 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 See, the devil, you're not going to counter for something that, that, that there is no true. When Jesus said there would be false prophets that came up, right? You know, if there wasn't going to be any prophets, he could just say, beware of all prophets. But he specifically says, beware of false prophets. And it's not an accident. Joseph Smith, when did he come? When did the 2300 days conclude? What year? 1844. When did Joseph Smith get martyred in Carthage, Illinois? July 27th, 18. When did Saeed Ali Muhammad, the prophet of the Baha'i, have his first vision? May, 20, May 23rd, 1844. When did the Fox sisters start getting that rapping? We're not talking about, you know, the rapping they, they do in the day, you know. <laughs> That, that, some of that might be just as, just as bad as that rapping, but, you know. When did the Fox sisters start communicating with this so-called spirit in Hydesville, New York? 1848? Right there around 1844, right? You know, Charles Darwin, we talked about this earlier. His first, those, those two essays that turned out to be the origin of species first came out in 1842, 18. Did the devil see the pattern? He saw it, didn't he? Prophet, time prophecy. How did, you know, God raised up a prophet by the name of Enoch? Jude tells you he was a prophet, doesn't it? He prophesied the seventh from Adam. About the coming of the Lord, right? He, gave, he had a time prophecy. What was this time prophecy? 
Ah. What was his time prophecy? It, it, he named his son what? Methuselah. What does that name mean? When he dies, Methuselah. When he dies, it will come. What will come? That's right. The flood would come. So before that prophecy met its fulfillment, God raised up another prophet named who? Noah. And he pointed his people back to that time prophecy, right? And you notice this. Every time he does a time prophecy and he does this, he always brings out a remnant. Did Noah have eight people that got on the boat? Was it eight people on the boat? Huh? I pity that guy that, was, that, was, that quit working on the eighth day. You know, he told Alvin, he told Noah, he said, Noah, look, you know, I, I've been listening to you for practically 120 years. And I've been faithful, Noah. I've been helping you build this ark. You know I have. But no, I can't do this no more. Mm-mm. You know, you know they're telling me, you crazy, Noah. You cray-cray. You talking about a flood and all this. You no, know, Noah, you know, I can't do this no more. I'm not showing up for work tomorrow, Rick. And the next day, God said, go into the ark, Noah, you and your family. And he shut the door. Right? And then the folks got their Budweiser and their lawn chairs, and they came out, and they had a stand-up comedy show. Hey, Noah! Man, it was bad in there, doesn't it? All them animals. Boy, Noah, you really have gone off the deep end. Had a good time mocking. You know what? It's dangerous. You know the Bible says that, that you know, Noah was a prophet. So was Moses. So was Abraham. And you see the same pattern. God raised up a prophet, and he tells Abraham, he said, Abram, he says, you know, your descendants are going to serve in the land and be afflicted 400 years. But they're going to come out flush. They're going to come out with their pockets full. Right? 400 years. And before the fulfillment of that, who did God raise up and point his people back to that prophecy? Moses. Moses. He told, he told Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, you know what? Israel been acting up. I'm going to have to chastise him. I got my boy Neb coming down from the north. He's going to handle this thing. And they're going into captivity for how long? 70 years. Is that a time prophecy? So what was Daniel doing in chapter 9? Daniel says, I was reading the book of, and I realized that time was almost up. We about to go home. Free at last. Free at last. We about to get up out of here. Prophet, time prophecy, prophet. Satan saw the pattern, so it's no accident. In 1844, he flooded the market. Flooded the market to confuse people. But what did God do? You could bring all the prophets you want. Jesus said you could bring all those false prophets you want, but not one of them will speak on the 2300-day prophecy. Not one of them. Search Joseph Smith's writings, Pearl of Pri- or Great Price, Doctrines and Covenants, search all, the Book of Abraham, search all of his writings and see if he spoke one word on the 2300-day prophecy. One word. God used that to validate his true prophet. And there's only one person that's ever expanded and given us the knowledge of that 2300-day prophecy. What's her name? And I'm going to tell you now, I'm not going to make no apologies. I'm not. I will use the spirit of prophecy. I will use the Bible. I will use whatever God gives me to use. And if you don't like it, you still got to love me. <laughs> and you're going to heaven, you still got to love me. Isn't that right? Huh? We have not followed cunningly devised fables. We can take the Bible and show exactly where the spirit of prophecy would rise and when. Would it rise on the first beast? The lion. Would it? Nope. Would it rise on the second beast? How about the third? How about Rome? How about, uh, you know, let's make it easy. You know, when did the 1,200, uh, the the 1,260 days come to an end? 1798. So we know that the woman fled into the wilderness. Was it after 1798? Hmm? The Bible says that the devil sent out a flood, to, but, but the earth opened its mouth and helped the women. They came over here, right? This was after 1798, right? Remember Revelation 13 said that that beast would receive a deadly wound, but that deadly wound be healed? Even in chapter 13, did that second beast come up and begin to help the woman? Even to the point where it says he would cause all, rich and poor, free and bond, black and white, to worship that first beast. You see the parallels of Daniel 7, Daniel 12, Revelation 12, and Revelation 13. We know exactly where we are in time's history. We know. And we know that the spirit of prophecy 
would rise up after 1798 when the woman fled into the and that earth that opened his mouth and helped the woman, we know what the earth is. It's the United States. So we know when the spirit of prophecy would come. Just take and do the study. Do the study on your own. You have to because someday you're going to be brought before magistrates and they're going to want to know, Wayne, why do you believe what you believe? And this stuff you're teaching and preaching, why do you believe that? And you say, because we have a more sure word of prophecy that you do well to take heed to, like a light shining in a dark place. God has given us this gift of prophecy, and I'll be dog. I used to say something other than that years ago. <laughs> if I'm going to let anybody intimidate me in disowning the gift that God has given me. You know why? You know why, you know, Laodicea is blind? You know who the Laodicean church is? Who's the Laodicean church? Is it the Baptist? Is it Alvin? Is it the Methodist? Got to be them Catholics. You know that you can't trust them. Is it the Catholics? Who is it? Who's us? Seven-day Adventists. We're the last church. And one of the conditions of the seven-day Adventist church is what? Blind. Could the church be blind because she has ignored, ignored the spirit of prophecy? Either ignored. How many of you, you know what? Testimonies to the churches. I got to read this because we got to go. But I got to tell you this because I'm hoping that you don't fall into this category. This here is uh, from early writings. How many of you read early writings? Huh? If you haven't read it, you, you know, Read it again for the first time. Huh? Okay, let me share something with you. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, now this thing wants to act up. Give me just a second, and I'm going to let you go. But this is, this is crucial, because, see, this is the thing. Peter told you that prophecy is no, of no private interpretation, Right? And we have a more sure, you know, in other words, you know, Jim, you can trust what God's word says more than you can trust what your eyes see. Because we haven't seen nothing like we're going to see. You know that? We've none of us seen anything like what we're going to see. And first and foremost, if you are not, if you are not in a solid relationship with the Lord Jesus, well, you know, what more do I need to say about that? And if you are not studying to show thyself approved and asking God to baptize you afresh and to fill you, you know, the Bible, James says, you have not because you what? You ask not. If you being evil know how to give your kids good gifts, how much more so will your father in heaven give them the Holy Spirit that do what? Ask him. Ask him. We know how to ask for stuff. Honey, could you bring me another cold drink? <laughs> you know, could you get me this? Could you get, I got a grandson, you know, he works me. I'll put him on blast. He always asking me to get him to do this, do that. Why you up? <laughs> Why you up? Could you get me something to drink? <laughs> and I'm sitting down. <laughs> so I don't know where he gets it from. And probably his daddy, you know. Now that sounds like a grandpa thing to me. Okay, listen, I got to read this to you. you know, early writings. Okay, where are we at? And I'm going to leave it with this. Early writings. And let's see. I'm looking for page 48. Page 48. And let's see here. I'm getting there. Just give me a minute. Okay, here we go. Early writings. No, I'm sorry. You know what? I am so sorry. Thank you, Lord. I'm looking for selective messages. First selective messages. The other thing I was looking for was in early writings. First selective message is page 48. Okay.
Man. Book one, early writings, page 48. You got it, Doug? Oh, first, let, there you go. That's my, thank you, Wayne. I was just testing to see if you was paying attention. <laughs> you know, yeah, I was just, right. Just, just, uh, Select first selective messages, and it is one more. Oh, here we go. It's under it's called attitude towards the testimonies. Duh. All right, listen to this. Okay. Here we go. There will be a hatred, you hear me? There will be a hatred against the testimonies, which is satanic. The workings of Satan will be to unsettle the faith of the churches in them, meaning the testimonies. For this reason, Satan cannot have so clear a track to bring in his deceptions and bind up souls in his delusions if the warnings and reproofs and counsels of the spirit of God are heeded. She says that the testimonies would be hated. So let me just, let me just, you know what, let me just put it out there like that. If you have a problem with the spirit of prophecy or Ellen White, take it to your God and get it straight. Take it to your God and get it straight. Now, now, people would want to know, well, you know, I don't need that. Hear what the scripture says. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be what? Established. Believe in his prophets and you shall what? You know, um, you know and if you go to Google to try to find out whether Ellen White was a prophet or not, you've already messed up. Google, Google, I call Google, and now there's good things on Google, but Google I call the, the, the knowledge of the equivalency of the tree of good and evil. There's good things on there, but there's a bunch of bad stuff too. And if you were, let me just say this, if one of you had a dream from God tonight and came to me the next day and said, James, you're not going to believe this, you're not going to believe this, you're not going to believe this, I said, you're probably right. I had a dream from God last night. And he told me this, you know, the Bible says, try the spirit to see if it be of God, right? But chances are, even if one of your kids came to you and said, you know, God spoke to me, Jesus came in my room last night, you know, and spoke to me, you can go start searching his room, trying to find the weed or whatever substance. Because even if they're in our own family, chances are, are we going to believe him? Would you believe your kids? Would your kids believe you? Not right off, I'm sure. So, so I'm telling you, you know what? It's not unusual. It's not unusual that she is getting battered. You know, Luke chapter 6, verse 36. Somebody find that for me. Jesus said, you know, woe unto you when they speak good of you. you know, oh, you're a great guy. You're wonderful. Be careful. Be careful. For, they, for so they did the same thing to your fathers, did the same thing to the false prophets. Isn't that what he said? Did he say that? Huh? Luke chapter 6, verse 36. Now I've got to finish this here. Listen to this one. This one is amazing, too. This is from the same chapter, but uh, it's up at the top. Here is um, 40. And it says here, I saw the state of some who stood on the pres on present truth, but disregarded the visions the way God had chosen to teach in these cases. Those who err from the Bible... I saw that in striking against the visions, they did not strike against the worm. She's calling herself a worm, right? The feeble instrument that God spake through, but against the Holy Ghost. I saw it was a small thing to speak against the instrument, but it was dangerous to, the, to slight the words of God. I saw if they were in error and God chose to show them their errors though through visions and they disregarded the teachings of God through visions, they would be left to take their own, to take their own way and run in the way of error and think they were right until they would find it out too late. Then in the time of trouble, what time? The time of Jacob's trouble, right? I heard them cry to God in agony. Why didst thou not show us our wrong? 
that we might have not, we might have got right and been ready for this time. Then an angel pointed to them and said, my father taught you, but you would not be taught. He spoke through visions, but you disregarded his voice. He and he gave you up to your own ways to be filled with your own doings. Broadside to those who are receiving the seal of the living God. You know, those folks said, you know, why, Jim? Why, 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 God, why didn't you tell us? Why didn't you tell us this is in the time of trouble? Why didn't you tell us how bad it was going to be? Why didn't you tell us what was coming? He said, I tried, gave you the testimonies, gave you the spirit of prophecy, but you would not. It's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing. So I'm just telling you, do with it what you will. If you have a problem with the spirit of prophecy with Ellen White, and you know what's just amazing to me is most people that I have encountered that want to talk all this, you know, haven't even read the books. I, I, you know, when I first read Desire of Ages, I opened this book and I started reading this thing, and I had, you know, and up at the top it has the, the chapters from the Bible. So I'm checking, I'm reading the Bible, and then I'm checking, I'm like, oh my goodness. And I would look at that book like, wow, wow, wow. Great controversy, Acts of the Apostles, Patriarch, you know, do due diligence. If you disregard this, well, you have a right to do so. The Bible says, let every man be persuaded in his own mind. But you do at your own peril. Because you cannot, you cannot disregard who God has chosen to speak to his people without either making him a liar or saying, you know, somehow God changed. He, he, he didn't give the remnant church the gift of prophecy like he did the Old Testament church and the New Testament church. Well, then God is a respecter of persons, isn't he? Lord, why didn't you give it to us? We need it most. The, world's, the world is closing in on us. We need to know, don't we? So I'm just encouraging you. Take time. You know what she said about the, about the Bible? The Bible is the greater light. Her writing she called what? The lesser light. A lesser light. She knew who her place was. You do well, Peter said. You take heed as a day star as a day star. Study to show thyself approved. Open your Bibles prayerfully and open up the spirit of prophecy and prosper. Amen? Amen. Who had that uh, Luke chapter 6 verse 36? Did somebody have that? Because I, you know, would you read that, Sister Anna? Nope. Nope. Luke chapter 6, you, you're just a little bit further. That's okay, we, we, we know, Sabbath is, you know, Luke chapter 6, verse 36. Oh, 36, I was reading 37. That's okay, that sounded good too. Be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. Am I writing, reading right? No. Oh, is it, am, I, am I, hold on. Okay, let me Let me get there. What did I say? Luke 6? You said 36, and I read 36 and 37. And Jim, are you making it wrong? I probably do. Yeah, I do. Anyway, uh, was it 26 or 36? Or maybe not even Luke at all. Anyway, Jesus said, be careful when all people speak well of you. <laughs> so what book is it in? 626? Oh, okay. We get it eventually. Okay. Luke 6, 26. There you go. Woe unto you, and all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers uh, to the false prophets. Yeah. So if people were all saying wonderful things about Ellen White, you should be on the lookout. They're supposed to be saying the woman was cray-cray. They're supposed to be saying she was a plagiarist. She was this, she was that. If I were the devil, I would not be endorsing her. Would you? No. So take this for what it's worth. Your Bibles first in the spirit of prophecy, especially the testimonies. You know, we have been blessed tremendously, and we have not followed cunningly devised fables. 
and you are have, you're going to have to be able to sit down with somebody and be able to show them why you believe what you believe. It's time to take that thing called the remote and cut it off. Get on your knees, pick up the Bible, pick up the spirit of prophecy, and be established and prosper. Is that all right? Okay. Remember, the holy watchers, what do they do? They watch. <laughs> Gracious Father, Lord, we're so thankful for your mercy and your kindness towards us. And we're thankful, Lord, for the love that you demonstrated to us and what you have given us as a people. And, Lord, we don't have anything to fear except that we forget how you've led us in the past. So, Lord, we're asking you, give us a fresh look at your word first and foremost. And then, Lord, help us to see the wonderful things that you have given to this church to guide us through the minefield that Satan has placed in our paths to lead us and to cause us to fall off the, the path of righteousness. Lord, we're asking you to do this. We're asking for the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us, to fill our minds, and to do the things that you have caused us to do as a people to warn this world what is soon to come upon it. In Jesus' holy and most precious name, amen.